Hi everyone, it's Dr. Kim. Let's talk talks. So we have four different drugs in the same category as Botox. Now, everyone knows the name Botox. Botox is like Kleenex. It kind of is a brand name that is used for a category of product. So Botox was the first in on the market. Botox was developed in the late 80s and it is botulism. So it is food poisoning, essentially purified and attached to a little protein. That protein carries it down to your nerve. The uh, botulinum is taken up into the nerve. The nerve can no longer function and activate your muscles. And we, when we relax your muscle, you don't make your wrinkle. So that is how Botox and the Botox category of drugs relax wrinkles. Basically, you're not using those muscles, you relax the wrinkles. Botox takes 7, 10, 14 days approximately to kick in, maximum at around 14 days, and then wears off over three to four months, depending on the individual. Some people get a little longer, some people a little less. Um, Well-studied drug, as I said, it's been around since the late 80s. Millions of people have been injected with it. Second in on the market was Disport or Disport, depending on how you want to say it. And Disport is also botulism, so food poisoning, and attached to a protein. So very similar structure in the two drugs, but it is a different protein than Botox. What we find with Disport is that it tends to kick in a little bit faster. Some people start to feel it working at approximately 72 hours. Um, so a little bit of a quicker kick in. It uh, is still maximum at 14 days and lasts again approximately three to four months depending on the person. Lots of misunderstandings around Disport. Um, the dosing that I do is equivalent, it's just different dilutions. So there's lots of confusion that it takes more Disport than Botox, but that's not true. It's just different dilutions. Um, and the other uh, question people have about Disport is they've heard that it spreads um, and uh, it's not as precise as Botox. But that's actually a good thing uh, because that means with Disport, it spreads a little bit so we can actually get a greater area of coverage compared to Botox. Next in on the market was Zeomin, and our uh, Zeomin is still botulism, okay, it's still botulism, uh, but there's no protein. It has no little friend to carry it down to your nerve. Um, it still lasts three to four months. It still gradually uh, takes effect over seven to 10 days and then wears off. Very, very similar to Botox. And again, equivalent dosing. Dosing is exactly the same. The only difference with Zeomin is that there's no protein. There's no little friend to carry it down to your nerve as there is in Botox and Dysport. So because of that, there's actually nothing to become tolerant to. And one of the issues that we see in people who are injecting Botox repeatedly for many, many years is that they can start to become tolerant to the Botox and either it wears off quickly or we have escalating doses. And we think that that is because the body is uh, recognizing the protein. It's almost like you're being immunized against the protein uh, and kind of shuts it down. So the nice thing about the zeolin is that there's no protein, so there's nothing to become tolerant to, nothing to develop antibodies to. So this is a fabulous product if your Botox has stopped working and also people who are very sensitive, um, don't want a lot of ad other additives. Additives I use Zeomin um, and uh, definitely has its place. Next, we have Nucevia. Nucevia is also known as Nutox. This is the latest one on the market. It, get, it got Health Canada approval in October 2019 um, and FDA in the summer of, of 2019. So we've had it now since October. Again, equivalent dosing. All four of these drugs, equivalent number of units, okay? And equivalent injection points. What we're starting to see with Nucevia 
is, uh, again, some people are feeling that it kicks in quite quickly. Uh, same as the Dysport, kicking in quickly, lasting the same amount of time as Botox. And uh, a few uh, of my clients are coming back and telling me that the Nucivia has lasted longer for them. And I've also used it on a bunch of people uh, who were completely resistant to Botox. And we have found that the Nucevia Nutox has worked really, really well for those people who are resistant to Botox. So all four of these drugs definitely have a role to play in a specific patient population. Uh, that is why I keep all four of them in the clinic at all times. Um, it is important for you to understand what your options are. If you're giving an informed consent to a treatment, one of those things to be informed of is your different options. So it is important for you to understand which drug you're being injected with, the pros and cons of each individual uh, drug option. So as always, if you have any questions, you need any clarification, please message, email, um, and I will answer them for you. Have a great day, Bespoke Babes.